evening and welcome to Money Matters. Uh, my name is Jim Butler with the Deary Wealth Management and my co-host tonight is Patty Tawadros of SpaceX. Studio X. Studio X. SpaceX, that's like a Tesla. <laughs> You're right. Sorry about that. So we're going to have a slightly different format to our show tonight. We're going to start off with a question because that's going to lead into uh, the initial discussion. Um, and so does that sound good to you, Yeah, Patty? that sounds fantastic. So uh, Daniel Wilton in Philadelphia is, uh, wrote in to ask the question, what are some software trends, new software trends for business? So, you know, we were talking about that. It's a little bit of obscure question because there's all different types of software trends. I'd say the biggest trend is that everything's going to a subscription. You can't buy virtual. You can't buy the software anymore. You can't go into the store and buy Microsoft. So you always used to buy the disc. Now you have to go online and subscribe to it. So you have these recurring ongoing costs. So I see that a lot. I also see the virtual assistants happening more and more frequently and they're integrated through Google, mm -hmm. the iPhone, I'm sure Android has it as well, through mm -hmm. Amazon has their version, Alexa. So in your experience, Patty, the uh, uh, customers and clients that you work with, mm -hmm. Do they adapt easily to that, or do you see some resistance? Uh, for a customer of mine to adapt to those things, they need to change the way they're optimizing their websites so that they're search engine friendly for real questions. So when you go on Google and you search for something or you talk into your phone and you say, beer store near me, that used to be the, the basics of it. Now people are searching for things using voice commands and your website needs to be able to respond to it. So it's always that you got to go back to the customer and the trends have changed in that technology and now we need to change your strategy. Right. And there's always some resistance. You know, it's frustrating. You feel you spent all this money to get your website optimized to 2018 <coughs> standards and now 2019 standards are different. So I, I always feel for them. So you have to wonder if there's a certain generation, for example, that adapts a little bit easier, suggesting that the younger they are, the more easily they adapt because it comes maybe a little more natural. Whereas the older they are, maybe my generation or older, might be a little more resistant to change. I think it's not the actual technology change that I propose, it's the cost mm -hmm. associated to implementing the change. So they don't have to do anything for it to, right. you know, I just say, now it's going to cost you another X per month or this much money to do a full conversion to this new technology. Right. And that's what, that's the hard part. So I think a lot of companies end up getting left behind because they can't, they can't rationalize the spend, even though that's how you get found. So if you were doing, well, you are doing financial management and mm -hmm. if somebody was looking for somebody with a specialty, and they Google searched it, typed it in, asked their phone, you'd want to be found for that. Sure. But I'm sure you, most of your business is probably from actual, you know, referrals. referrals. Right. But it doesn't hurt to, no. to show. No. Yeah. No. You know, so from this, from my standpoint, our business has changed dramatically. And uh, for those fellow practitioners who mm -hmm. uh, don't keep up, uh, they are basically walking like a snail in comparison. You know, they just, they can't be as efficient as what it comes down to. They might be productive with regards to how productive they were in the past. Mm -hmm. They're just not keeping up. So, for example, uh, you know, a couple things that come to mind. One clearly is uh, client software management or CRM systems. Uh, the one that we use is the one built by a firm that I'm affiliated with where my license is held. <coughs> and they came out with their own version something like eight to ten years ago and they're constantly making updates yeah. uh, but that's because they've also been very open to feedback and you know looking at what's out in the marketplace um, and, and then you know talking about search engine optimization and how do you better position yourself um, there's there's you know in our industry all the major companies from you know, Fidelity, Vanguard, T. World Price, they're all coming out with internet tools in order to attract attention for obvious reasons because they want people to come to them. Yeah, so the part that happens is that people don't want to make the investment and they think my website's good enough, my online experience for users, it's fine, it's fine, it does what it needs to do, but people are investing their money and they want to have 
a different experience. I mean, maybe a 60-year-old is okay with the website the way it is. They're comfortable with it. They've been in it. But when you're trying to lure new investors that are 25 to 30, they want to have a really integrated experience. They want an app. They want to be able to log in and check their you know, their investments and see how they're doing. They want to have the same experiences if they went to some big house like an E-Trade. Right. You know, back when I used to online invest, you know, one of these kinds of things, they're expecting you to keep up with that. No question. Yeah. Absolutely no question. And guess who's going to inherit the money from mom or dad at one point? Right. The person who needs to go online and they don't have a money person necessarily. So I inherit a half million dollars from my mom and now I need to invest it. Maybe I'm 25 years old. I don't, none of my friends have money people. So mm -hmm. how am I going to find somebody? I'm going to Google somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I, I certainly don't see it changing. Uh, it's, it's not going to mm -hmm. slow down. I mean, you look at uh, something as, as uh, both exciting but scary as self-driving cars. Yeah. I can't imagine getting into a self-driving, self-propelled vehicle. Wouldn't you be I terrified in Philadelphia? <laughs> Pedestrians <laughs> running out, jaywalkers. I right? think that somebody would get hit. For sure. And it only takes a few bad stories mm -hmm. uh, for people to hear. And then that what that does is it kind of slows down, not necessarily the technology, Patty, but probably the implementation. And the adoption. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to buy a self-driving car. Right. I've seen that car ride services like Uber and Lyft, that some of them are working towards getting the driverless cars. Mm -hmm. And then I think we have this whole new industry where people are able to make money between jobs or as their prime job because they right. like it and now they're going to lose their job. I mean, that's a, that's a ways out before I'm summoning a self-driving car. Right. Yeah. I so think I guess so. they have time to adopt to a new career. So what, uh, you know, one tidbit that you might be able to pass on to our audience tonight in terms of uh, new trends in technology as we go forward, anything come to mind? Uh, you know, yeah. such as uh, uh, be prepared to adapt and just stay yeah. open, listen, look, research, read. Yeah, I would say that people should be willing to make the investment in their business. It's for your business. If you find a reputable company like myself, people can work around your budget. So if you say, I can only spend $500 a month, you can work on optimizing your website little by little. And by the time you get through it, it's going to be time to optimize it in a whole new strategy. Right. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. They should consider at least optimizing the most important services on their website right. so that they can be found and continue to make money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Thank yeah. you Thank very much. Yeah, of course. Okay. So if you have a question that you'd like to send in, uh, we'll give you the information to do that. You can have your questions answered on Money Matters. Please go to our website, money-matterstv.com, or our homepage. Click on the banner on the right that says, Send Us Your Questions. <coughs> While you're on our website, you can find information about our hosts and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S-T-V dot com. Our guest tonight is Lori Kirkering with the Exton Region Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Lori. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. You bet. So you are the president. Yes. An employee. Yes. Of the chamber. Yes. And we have plenty of time to learn about Exton's specialty and where you fit, but let's look at the bigger picture for a moment. Uh, and that has to do with, based on your experience, Lori, where do you see Chambers of Commerce fitting in to, you know, the private sector and to some extent even the public sector, say at the state level? Sure, Jim. Um, it's a great question because uh, Chambers were established over 100 years ago and were mostly a, a gentleman's type of group of, of people who got together to help the businesses grow. Over time, that has evolved in many ways. Um, and specifically in Pennsylvania, 
uh, a group of ch uh, presidents of chambers, including right in Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, Pittsburgh and surrounding counties, have recognized that the growth in Pennsylvania is not as good um, in the mm. economy as it they would like it to be. Um, we're, we rank in the 40s among the states. And even though mm. Chester County, where we live, is very vibrant and one of the top economies, the state as a whole is lagging in a lot of areas. And um, someone like Rob Wonderling from the Greater Philadelphia Chamber and Guy Shiraki from the Chester County Chamber of Commerce um, are very instrumental with other associations from the state to come up with really good legislation to, um, to help with this. Um, and are really trying to garner the help of smaller regional chambers, like the Exton Region Chamber of Commerce and the other eight chambers in Chester County. Um, it's a lot. It, it is, um, to really affect that change um, through that legislative process. And through a lot of investigation, they noticed the three different areas of concern that needed addressing was um, our post-secondary education, in mm. in the state, um, the infrastructure, uh, specifically our ports and roads and bridges and yeah. and, and airports, and also um, the health care and the access to it and how what that will look in the future. Right. So that's how um, you know that's that's the basis about it. And and what I love as they're getting ready to present certain legislation is they're really trying to tap into the community about good ideas. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll sit and we'll watch, you know, Fox News or CNN or, you know, C-SPAN and just say, I, I think this would be a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're trying to encourage is um, different associations, including chambers around the state, to um, hold some of these sessions to get those great ideas to potentially make a change for the better for the economy of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lori, do you lobby as a Chamber of Commerce for these initiatives? So that's a very good question. The Exton Region Chamber of Commerce began primarily as a lobbying organization. Um, Exton is a crossroads and there were two gentlemen that saw the need for a bypass to go through the area and worked w in with Harrisburg mm -hmm. to make that happen. Um, since then, we've become more of an informational, not so much with the advocacy, but have worked with the, the, the um, chambers that do advocate, for instance, the Chester County Chamber of Commerce and the Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce to um, make those initiatives heard. Uh, so as these different Grow PA initiative bills come into play, mm -hmm. I do believe we will all embrace that and make those suggestions so that as a, as a, um, a greater vo voice we will be heard um, and things will get done. So uh, let's pick up on your term that you just used, Grow PA. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that? So again, the Grow PA was just determined by, and I didn't use that word before, <laughs> uh, that was the name that these organizations throughout the uh, state came up with these for the initiatives. Okay. So it's basically um, from, a, and of course Pennsylvania is so diverse, uh, Chester County is such a wealthy area, um, but you know it, it, it encompasses the whole state and the Chambers of Commerce, different associations, um, schools, you know, learn, d different areas of learning all coming together, uh, meet periodically and I know they just met recently I haven't had the whole list of what they're trying to present in the spring as of yet but um, we will be working with our chamber the Government Affairs Council to to let that information or give that information mm -hmm. to our members as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. so you'll hear more and more about it because the need is great um, even in a, an area with a good economy at this point um, you know just the, the growth um, and and a lot of our growth has to do with apartments and townhouses and they're very it's very costly to live in Exton um, you know and some of the the people that are coming out of the schools are not making the salaries to be able to even afford to live in Exton so um, from this Grow PA will also hopefully come different workforce development 
type of solutions to help the disparity. We have a lot of businesses in Exton who cannot find qualified people for the manufacturing jobs or skilled labor jobs. And meanwhile, there are, they're, they're having to draw from um, outside of Chester County to get people to come in, as well as a lot of our service industries, the restaurants, the hotels, the um, retail, where you know we're seeing more and more people coming from Philadelphia or Reading, um, Coatesville to fill these positions because there is it they can't afford to to work and live in Exton. So I think a lot of these different um, initiatives will will trickle down from what's happening in the state to what's happening. Do you look to create training programs for people to become that different types, to fill these di different types of roles? That is a big goal, and I think um, at our chamber, I can speak for Exton Chamber, we're really good at making connect connections. I say connecting because that's what we say. Um, but we have a lot of smaller um, single proprietor businesses um, in our chamber for the most part, but the need, the, the actual community of Exton and the surrounding area and the region, um, the need for that is really great. And I think um, I'm blessed to, to work with a, a lot of chamber presidents, whether it's the coalition in Philadelphia that does is more regional or the um, Chester County Alliance. And we are starting to make those or, or talk about these things that aren't just about like big events in our area or ways to meet people, but actually how can we partner with the Westchester area, Westchester University or Immaculate at a university to do some of these training programs or connect um, with even funding in the state mm -hmm. to, to get the training programs. Um, I just, so I, maybe we could just address uh, like a misperception of what people get out of being part of the chamber. Mm -hmm. I used to just view the Chamber of Commerce as you would just join in in the old days, you could get health care, discounted mm -hmm. health care, and you could meet people for coffee, lunch, or maybe take a, like a educational class. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't sound at all like what today's Chamber of Commerce is. I think it depends on the chamber, okay? Yeah. And I think um, chambers of commerce have to evolve just like any other organization mm -hmm. uh, to meet the needs of the community. Um, at one point, for instance, Nonprofits would never even nonprofit organizations would not even consider joining a chamber of commerce. At this point, we have 15 percent of our membership is nonprofits because they see the value that we're trying to get the for-profit businesses and the nonprofit organization communities together to really make the area great. Um, right now, we do unfortunately cannot offer the health care to all our single props, but um, what we are trying to do is find what can be done from our level. Uh, um, our chamber is very lean and mean. We have two paid employees. We, re we um, really value the volunteerism of our members and that makes them mm -hmm. feel part of our group. Um, and that's what we offer that opportunity so that they can see what you do for a living and, and like you and do business with you perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but there are other chambers who might have more uh, paid members or more uh, experience, or not experience, but um, clout in the region that we could partner with mm -hmm. to make those differences. Because I think it's great to have, I mean, there's a million networking organizations, right? I mean, you probably belong to five or 10 of them. You know, yeah. you could go somewhere different every night. The value of that is still there. There's still value, especially for a small, uh, business, you know, that can't call an 800 number and say, hey, can you send the accounting department right now or the marketing department or the lawyer? They have, like, the chamber becomes their 1-800 number. So they can call and I can say, oh, you need a financial planner? How about Jim Butler? You know, I mean, we, we are that group of people that help each other out. And I'm probably going on a tangent. But the hope is that we can focus more on something that's more valuable for the region mm -hmm. than just nine different you know, chambers having events. I mean, they're still valuable, and I think people still want them. But there's so much more we can do, especially with the workforce 
and you know at 4.7 percent I think it is in in Pennsylvania right now and unemployment unemployment which is really low um, but it's it's still higher than the rest of America and you know and and filling those jobs and like you said with the, the uber I mean if those people lose their jobs what are they going to do mm -hmm. so you know so as a chamber member for mm -hmm. many years and in, in the past having been a member of several chambers um, I think today it's also about relationships mm -hmm. and you touch on that to be able to have the confidence to be able to call in and that not only you're going to be able to point me to an area of, uh, of need of service for example but that that's of a quality organization or at least you hope so right unfortunately the uh, state of the health insurance is such that it's no longer about getting a, an association plan because they're just not available. Maybe someday in an PA that might happen and it might not. Right, and and I think that's part of this initiative as well as one of the the peer like the the pillars of Grow PA. Um, you know, the cost of healthcare is very expensive. Um, you know, people do have access, especially in in my area of the state, but it, it's very expensive and um, a lot of single proprietor businesses are having to merge or go out of business because they can't even afford to pay for their health insurance. It's the way it is. So there has to be other ways of delivery or better ideas to make it a little less expensive. If we are paying this, let's make it a little less expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been discussion at some of our lunches that potentially someday we can go to James Way and get everything, not just our, you know, um, our flu shot or something, you know, that you'll go there for your your mammogram or your um, CAT scan and that type of Where thing. Where is this? James Way? Yeah. What's James, James Way? It's, I'm not, that was a really old reference. <laughs> uh, <laughs> CVS, like, so CVS, oh, like gotcha. you go to a CVS yeah. or a Walmart, like they <laughs> will be your, your health care you know, it, it's going to evolve just like that, um, the, you know, the, the automated car. You know, I mean, things are going to change, and how can we best do it so that we're still able to grow? Do you see the Grow PA initiative, or just in conversations with some of your colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, Lori, trying to reach out to those areas within the state that uh, are less dense, densely populated, the more rural areas, that certainly have a need for all everything that we're talking about? Uh, that is very important, I think, to even, you know, these business leaders and, and association leaders. And, um, you know, we saw, we saw that even with the, um, the attempt to change the law, the, the property tax laws last year, the SB 76, that was um, not approved because of um, it, it lost, but it's still kind of in committee, um, or it was passed, but it's still in committee. There's a huge disparity between education in this area versus different parts of the state, and um, it it's really affecting um, the whole health of of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, Temple University is working to try to find some ideas with that disparity, but. Um, you know, there's less population in Pittsburgh, but they get the same amount of money yeah, that they had before. Um, school districts in our area that are very well funded and, you know, are rated very highly do not want to give up their property tax, you know, so there's this, they don't want the coffers, you know, the, and people that are older, getting older in our population, they don't want to keep paying the high property tax rates. Um, my mom, she it, keeps saying that, right? why should I pay? I don't have kids in school. Um, so, yeah. there, you know, there's a lot of solutions on the table um, from, you know, our, uh, the elected officials of how the best way to handle this, uh, you know, and I, but I think having some of these organizations like the, the chambers and, and different organizations can help with that as well. Um, to, to, cause when there's areas of the country, uh, of the state specifically, that don't have, um, you know, broadband access, they don't have um, the internet, uh, right. don't have even, I mean, even books. I have, my cousin lives in the north central part of the state. You know, it's, it's hard to get people, there's like a hundred people there, so. 
I have a quick one that I know everyone's interested in, uh, specifically roads. Mm -hmm. How can the community, how does the chamber help with the road systems? So we partner with, again, a, a lot of the different organizations, and, and as I said, it took us 12 years when we started 50 years ago, 50, almost 50 years ago, right. it took us 12 years to get that uh, bypass pa passed. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we work with different organizations like a TMAC, which is the Transportation Management of Chester County, and different places around, you know, SEPTA, PennDOT, to try to, to work with that. Um, we also work with the townships to try to see what, you know, can be done about that. Again, there has to be certain laws that, that or legislation that should be put into place to help us to be able to fund that during the time. But yeah. a lot of it, f in terms of our chamber, has to do more with the education piece of, you know, this is what they're trying to accomplish right now, and this, you know, if you believe that they should improve the roads, this is what you should do. One of the things that amazes me about Chester County, which of course is unique to one of five counties in the in the Philadelphia area, Patty, is how much it's, it continues to grow. Mm -hmm. For example, King of Prussia, it's exploding. Great Valley area, mm -hmm. exploding. Exton Region Chamber, or Exton Region, can, it's just on the verge of starting to really grow, and it's in a rather small area. We were talking early, earlier about the growth in Philadelphia County. Mm -hmm. Where are all these people coming from? I don't, you know, I, it, it's fascinating. And I think chambers certainly have an opportunity to band together, mm -hmm. work together, and to become a more valuable resource, as, if, as you've pointed out. And not just chambers, <coughs> Jim. Um, you know, there's a lot of organizations in our area that help with that, like the economic development councils, those type type of uh, organizations where we partner, instead of competing, partner to get things done, um, you know, and, and hopefully that will make a big difference um, through the state and when the people do come in, they'll stay, you know, and, and we won't export uh, students to other states because they can't find the right job right. or they can't open a business because of the different regulations and that type of thing. And, and all that will be uh, um, addressed in the Grow PA right. initiatives over the next couple of years. Right, right. Well, thank you, Lori. It's been very informative. Certainly look forward to uh, uh, more excitement to come in Pennsylvania and Chester County, as well as surrounding counties. Yeah. Thank you also, Patty uh, Tawadros, Studio X, <laughs> for being a co-host. It's been a lot of fun. And thank you for uh, watching and hope you learned something tonight. Uh, and until next, our, our guest coming up on the next show uh, is actually a gentleman whose name is Chris uh, Gilbert. He's an IT expert, so it's a compliment to more technology advancements. And until then, uh, your money matters. <laughs>